So we all know Jay-Z and Diddy are pretty close, but with Diddy now in the public spotlight for all the wrong reasons, Ice Cube has come out with some pretty shocking statements about the Carters. A lot of you listening to me right here, right now, you're not part of the club either. And what I realized with the club is what makes them so mad is when you don't want to be a part of their club. That pisses them off. What club am I talking about? I'm talking about the club of gatekeepers. The important thing is, you know, for me to go on these platforms, say what I feel about what I think. And, you know, some people may get pissed off because I'm going to talk to everybody. Diddy got his start in the music industry as an intern at a radio station around the same time as Jay-Z won significant event early in his career was when he co-hosted a celebrity basketball game at City College of New York. Unfortunately, it ended tragically with a stampede that resulted in nine deaths. The mayor at the time, David Dinkin, criticized Diddy for not ensuring experienced organizers were in charge, especially since tickets were oversold after some time at Uptown Records Diddy founded back. Boy Records in 1993, one of his earliest big hits, was releasing Notorious Big's album Ready to Die. He also played a major role in launching the careers of artists like Foxy Brown, Faith Evans, and Mary J. Blige, but later Mark Curry spoke out about Willie went down behind the scenes at Bad Boy Records. Did I see these kind of things in his actions when I knew him or when I was around him? Did I see him have those bursts of violence just not on? You'd be like, he did it. If you've seen that, it was another video. He won some, he just, he just over, over cocky. That's why he got fired from Uptown. He's just over, he's over, uh, what do you call someone who's overly confident to the point to where it's called arrogance, right? He's arrogant. Nothing wrong with being arrogant, but when, you, when you're when arrogant and you do it in spiteful ways, then... So when I seen that and I reflect, and I'm like, man, I do remember seeing him be arrogant or putting, being physically violent towards females. I seen him be physically violent towards um, producers, uh, other record execs, you know, um, this, the, even artists. Always those kind of stories, man. But you know, those stories are seen from the inside out not from the outside in. So it's just like, sometimes you can tell, you know, as a man, you'd be like, look, we're gonna need a fair one or, or we're gonna, we're gonna, we a one-on-one, -on -one, a fair one-on-one. -on -one, and we fight as men so we can come to a resolution, we can, we can come to a resolution, right? So sometimes we fight as men, but you know, you, you see that sometimes they fight, they don't, they, they keep fighting. They fighting with women, they fighting with people. They fighting with love. They fighting with they self. I seen him fight with his own self. I seen him be violent to his own self. Forget anybody else. I seen him beat his own self up. Wow. What you mean by that? Meaning you putting yourself through so much stuff. You beating your own self up. You bringing yourself down um, with uh, whatever kind of... Um, things you need at that time whether they be whether it be alcohol whether it be pills or whatever it is that you need sometimes people get addicted to pills and when they get addicted to pills you know some you know that it alters the ego all of that kind of stuff devices i seen it all man you know and you said that you seen him get physical with his own orders meaning like um Producers, more, mainly the hitmen. Maybe mainly his 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 the, the, the producers. Um, and what I mean by physical, it'd be like sometimes it might be a physical fight between him and someone else. And you say, you know, wow, you're fighting even with your own artists. You're fighting when you go home. You're fighting with people in your office. You're fighting with your girlfriend. You're fighting with me. You just want to fight everybody, don't you? And that's how some. That's what when you think of that name, it, that might be what he defines bad boy. It's, it's 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 really about that energy that he feels like what makes him. That's that's what makes him. 
Diddy became a major figure in the music scene, especially during the intense rivalry between the West Coast and East Coast in 90s hip-hop and gangster rap this period marked a significant moment in the genre's history, the feud between Knight founder of Death Row Records and rapper Top. Shakur ended tragically with the deaths of both Biggie and Tupac. Although Diddy was never directly implicated in these tragedies, rumors and conspiracy theories have swirled around the circumstances of their death. Is despite the controversies, Diddy's career continued to thrive. Jaguar Wright offered an interesting viewpoint on Diddy's accomplishments. I was thinking to myself the other day, Uptown Records started with five people. Andre Harrell, Albie Short, Heavy D, and Puffy, and Kim was the longest working employee because she was there from the very beginning. She was Andre's personal assistant. Kim's dead. Heavy he is dead. Andre Morell is dead. The only two left are Puffy and Al and Al almost. Isn't that interesting? That is interesting. Heavy D was found dead, face down in the heart attack. Andre Harrell, heart attack. Kim died from pneumonia, but there's the first coroner's report that said that she died. It, it was ruled a homicide and they found toxins in her body to prove that she had been poisoned. You know, they, they have poisons that create heart attack and pneumonia-like symptoms. and. Then right after that, Al had a meeting and I was gonna meet up with him because we were in Vegas and then he said, no. You wanna know what they all had in common though? The survivors and the, and, and the late of Uptown Records, they were all writing tell-all books. Andre was writing a book right before he died. Heavy D was working on a book before he died. Kim Porter was working on a book before she died. And I'll be sure was working on the documentary of his life. And then he goes into a coma. Has Puffy ever been in a coma? Has he, has anything happened to him? He must be the luckiest mother because it seems like everybody that worked at Uptown Records from the very beginning. Just him. I guess Al disappointed you. You know, it's... I speak for a reason. When you see this bullshit, this motherfucking game with people that you love, that you like, you know, that you... It's too many coincidences. Too many. You... You honeycomb. Oh. <laughs> Stamp it. We gonna get you and your little dog too. Diddy faced more controversy when he was accused of assault in the music video for Hate Me Now, which featured NSA scene depicting them being crucified sparked outrage. Diddy feeling it was disrespectful wanted it removed, but the uncensored version leaked out in response. Diddy and Nas took action. Against Interscope Records, boss Diddy eventually pleaded guilty to a lesser charge and was sentenced to a day of anger management. But that's not the only violent incident in Diddy's past in a notorious event at a New York nightclub. A heated argument escalated into a shooting, injuring three people. Both Diddy and his then-girlfriend Jennifer Lopez were arrested and fade charges related to violence and gun possession. While Lopez's charges were dropped, Diddy went to trial alleging racial bias in the justice system against black men he was acquitted but his protege shine was sentenced to nine years in prison for his involvement accusing diddy of betrayal over time more individuals have come forward to corroborate allegations against diddy